loving God, as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, silence in us any voice but your own, that we might hear your word to us and know your will for us. In the name of your son Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. Let us listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, "'Give me a drink.'" His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This spring, we finally had the big muddy patch in our front yard planted with grass seed. Now, right after it was planted, we had this week with a lot of rain, so we didn't get into the habit of watering new grass seed, as you would. And so a couple of weeks later, I checked my voicemail, and the landscaper had been by. I noticed when I was by your house, that the grass I just planted was really dry. It really ought to be watered if you want it to grow. Oh, right. We need to water the grass seed. So Gray, because I tend to kill all plants, started getting out to water in the morning and the evening, and wouldn't you know it, the grass started sprouting up and was looking much better. The grass needed water to grow. At a very practical, literal level, water is the source of life. It caused my grass seeds to start growing. And we humans also need water to drink or we will get dehydrated and even die. But what is Jesus talking about when he's sitting at the well with a Samaritan woman? He says something about living water. And what is she talking about when she talks about water? It seems, as Jesus is wont to do, he is speaking on more than one level here. And I wonder if the Samaritan woman is also. So Jesus comes up to her at the well and asks her for a drink. So is Jesus talking about a literal glass of water because he's thirsty and it's a hot day and he's been traveling? It seems right away the Samaritan woman wonders if there's more to this request than just a literal glass of water. 
What you may not know, but the Samaritan woman would have known, is that the well is the scene of a typical biblical meet cute. Boys meet girls at a well. This is how Isaac met Rebecca, Jacob met Rachel, Moses met Zipporah. And you notice she talks about her ancestors. This is Jacob's well. So we can forgive the Samaritan woman if she's wondering if there is more to this request for a drink of water than a drink of water. Wait a minute, she says. How do you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? What is going on here, she wants to know. The disciples are conveniently off to town to get something to eat. She's skeptical. She's cautious. So Jesus continues the conversation, and it becomes clear that he is not just asking for a literal drink of water. He may be playing a little bit of a game with her by talking in double meanings, but he's not exactly flirting either. Jesus says, if you knew who was saying, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now on a literal level, living water could mean flowing water. It could be a fresh spring of water, which would be much easier to get your glass of water from. You just go to the edge and scoop out a little dipper full of water, instead of this well where you have to go down 65, 75 meters and haul the water back up again. It was a tedious job to haul water out of a well, yet the only way that a family would have water to drink if they didn't live near one of these springs. So Jesus could have meant flowing water, But when he talked about living water, it seems as if he's talking in a figure of speech. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Many scholars assume that the Samaritan woman is dull, perhaps because most of the disciples tend to be a little dull. She doesn't understand what Jesus is saying. Yet other scholars argue differently. And I didn't read the whole rest of the passage. It's one of the longest passages. It's the longest conversation that Jesus has with anyone in the Bible, actually. If we, if we read the whole thing, there is a case to be made that the Samaritan woman does understand that Jesus is not talking about some secret spring of fresh water, but he's offering something else, something figurative, something spiritual, Jesus seems to be talking in code. So she calls him on his code and tries to get clarity. If he is not going to speak directly, she'll play his game. She'll cautiously try to figure out, is she hearing correctly? Is she understanding correctly? What is it that Jesus is offering her? So she responds, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do we get this living water? Do you hear it? Do you hear her code talk? She's playing Jesus' game to see if she is understanding. Now, if she misheard Jesus, and he really did just want a drink of water, she was responding cautiously to not be made a fool. But if he was talking about spiritual things, she was asking him to keep talking, tell her more. If you're literally asking for water, then how do you intend to get this with no bucket? But if you're talking about something else, tell me. Where does this living water come from? Jesus explains that those who drink literal water from the well will have to keep coming back to draw more water. Just like each day I need to water my poor grass seed to help it stay alive. Each day I need to drink my eight glasses of water to stay hydrated. But Jesus says, those who drink the water I will give them will never be thirsty. 
Jesus is telling her he has another meaning in mind. The water I give will be a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Now, Jesus doesn't say it directly here, but later in the Gospel of John, in chapter 7, Jesus talks publicly using this same metaphor. He says, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus is giving something even more precious than the water that we need to drink to live or our plants need to grow. Jesus is giving new life. And in chapter 7, the narrator explains that Jesus actually means the gift of the Spirit. The new life Jesus is offering, though in code to the Samaritan woman, is the gift of new life, the gift of the Spirit, which is the living water which will not leave you thirsty or looking for anything more. Now, you may wonder, why would Jesus talk to her in code? Why wouldn't he just say, hey, would you like the Spirit? But offering the gift of the Spirit is a surprising thing for him to offer, especially because, as she earlier points out, he is a Jew, and she is a woman of Samaria. And Samaritans and Jews, not all, they don't share things in common. They're enemies with each other. Yet Jesus offers her this gift of God's Spirit. It's a courageous, radical thing for him to do and a courageous, radical thing for her to understand and to accept. When the Samaritan woman talks to him, some scholars assume she doesn't understand, that she's confused because she says, give me this water so I don't have to keep coming back to this well. They think she's taking the offer literally when he's talking figuratively. But the rest of the conversation that follows tell us that she does understand. Now, we get all wrapped up in this idea that she had five husbands and what does this say about her? But Jesus does not get wrapped up in that. Jesus and the Samaritan woman have this deep theological conversation about the best way to worship. So it seems she's understanding the spiritual aspect of what he is offering. How can they come together? How can the Spirit bring them together? Jesus is being cautious. She is being cautious because there is a lot on the line here. And you'll see in many places, Jesus talks in parables so that those who can understand, understand, and those who don't leave scratching their heads. This is common for him. That those who have the heart to receive the Spirit get what he's talking about. So she responds. She says, I want the Spirit. I want new life. I want what you have to offer. They talk theology and then, what does the Samaritan woman do? She runs to her village, she tells everyone there, and she draws them to Jesus. She might be the most effective evangelist in the New Testament. The Spirit has indeed come upon her. The Spirit of water has gushed up to eternal life in her. And because the Spirit moves in her, it starts to move in her village and they come to believe. Jesus talks about living water in hopes that we will understand the parallel. As much as we need water to live, as much as my poor little grass seeds need water so they can sprout and grow, as much as we understand what it feels like to be thirsty on a hot day, and how refreshing and life-giving it is to drink some ice-cold water, Jesus is offering us living water. Jesus is offering us the Spirit. Jesus is offering us refreshed, new life that will become in us a river of grace 
and mercy that flows out of our hearts to a thirsty world. Now, we might be like the bystanders who don't quite get what Jesus is offering us. We might be left scratching our heads. Or we might be like the Samaritan woman who hears the offer and cautiously yet courageously receives the gift that's being offered. Jesus offers us this living water again and again. And there are times that we open ourselves to the Spirit of God through baptism, being washed in the living water, through communion, which we will have in a little bit, the spiritual food that sustains our journey through returning to God in worship and in prayer. God gives us living water that quenches our thirst and overflows within us so that we can bless the world. Amen.